Hello and welcome to this episode of Point Counterpoint. We are here once again to discuss and deliberate on a burning issue uh, which concerns lands, livelihoods and futures. Unfortunately, both the issues that we are going to take up today are somehow interlinked and it has to do with ultimately people's lives and how their past is getting completely ruined by the present and ultimately destroying the future. The two issues that we are taking up today, one is a battle that has been fought by the villagers and people all across coastal Salset stretching into Murbungao and we are talking about the land acquisition uh, with regard to the double tracking project which has ultimately led to an absolute disbalance of a power equation where people power is completely coming up against state power and the brutal land acquisition process is taking place in a manner which is completely inhuman and inhumane. Apart from this, we will similarly look at a parallel and an equally strong agitation that has come up and this also has got to do with the expansion of the national highway uh, in the in the Bhuma area. Uh, if I am not wrong, the Taluka is Ponda, right? Yes. Taluka yes. is Ponda, correct. Ponda. Yes. And, uh, the, and this expansion plan also will lead to an acquisition of roughly about 45,000 square meters out of which 1,030 square meters is actually temple land. Uh, these figures seem to be somehow uh, dismissed as being trivial and not of consequence by the powers that be. Uh, the whole agitation has been literally dismissed as saying that about four houses will go and uh, uh, a different alignment is not possible uh, rather than uh, the current alignment which is going to cut through homes, homes and lands. Uh, so the idea is that you know we brought both these issues together because it is the same conflict, the narrative is the same, the spirit of the agitation is the same. The idea is that when you do infrastructure projects, why does, why do these infrastructure pro projects have to be done in a manner that is so conflicting with the people when there are other alternatives available. That is the key point. The key point here is that when there are other alternatives, alternatives available, why don't we, uh, why don't we look at them rather than get into an absolute uh, face off with the public in a manner where it always seems like a David versus Goliath fight. But we all know who won at the end. Uh, I thank my all the all the panelists who are here, all experts in their own right and and very importantly uh, stakeholders in this entire battle. I'd also like to point out that as always we try and reach out to both the government and the players uh, on the quote unquote the other side. The Southwestern Railways consistently refuses to be a part of any such debate and unfortunately the government of the day was also invited to be a participant in this particular discussion so that one could uh, sit uh, sit across and deliberate debate and discuss points but the government flatly uh, refused to send a representative for this discussion. So uh, uh, as always and we are not surprised in spite of our attempts to do so we do not have anybody from either the Southwestern Railways or the PWD here to discuss both the issues. Uh, the panelists, firstly on my extreme right is Advocate Leona Barreto, who is a lawyer for the Welsau villagers and uh, looking into these issues. And uh, welcome uh, Leona for being here. Thank you so much. Uh, Orville uh, needs no introduction, the convener of Goenchoe Court and in some ways the face of the people's agitation not only uh, in the coastal area but but across as well. Uh, Orville, thank you again. Uh, Advocate Swapnesh of the, the convener of the of the Goenchoe Abbas group has uh, is also has been in the forefront of all these issues across and has been a uh, been a both a guide and a supporter of uh, of the people giving them a lot of lot of advice and inputs in this long battle ahead and on the extreme left we are very privileged to have Sanjay Naik who is one of the leading lights in the protest against the Bhuma uh, road winding road uh, and he has decided to take this battle head on 
on the streets and in the courts. Uh, Leona, I'll start with you. If you can just uh, outline the current issue that we are debating, I'll just briefly narrate it. This is with regard to the final land acquisition, which the railways has said that dismissed all other objections of the people and are now uh, doing the final acquisition where they suddenly issued a notice on the 1st of August uh, stating that uh, all the lands of the villagers will be taken away and they asked the villagers to surrender the lands. And, an, and a notice dated on August 1st reached many homes, many people on the 26th and 27th, if I'm not yes, wrong, right. giving them just three days to even uh, understand uh, what it is. It's like a like an advanced death warrant coming to your house and, and you being told that come and surrender your, surrender your future in 72 hours. That's exactly what happened. Anyway, so this is with regard to this acquisition of 0.9985 hectares in the villages of Kurchore, Kakura, Savurde, uh, Shelvon, Savzude, Arial, Shandor, Girdoli, Velsao and Usorsi. Over to you, Leona. Yes, so just two days uh, before, the villagers of Pale and Azorsi were called with a notice to a deputy collector, the Mamladharan specific, uh, specifically stating that their land would be taken over by the railway, RVNL. And uh, when they were called on via the notice, it was only the survey number that was mentioned and the names of the people were mentioned. So, um, as usual, the people that were there were devastated. They mm. didn't know what to do with the notice that just came two days prior. Mm. However, when the notice was given, it was given under the Railway Act 1989 and there was no specifics as to what property exactly or how much measurement exactly the railway is asking. All that was there in the notice was the survey number and the names of the people, which also included tenants, munkars and the owners, rightful owners who had their ancestral houses from ages. And however, through that notice, there was nothing specific given and it was given under the Land Acquisition Act. So when we went to the Mamladdar's office, we raised our objection there as to the villagers do not want to surrender their land to the railways. Yes. Okay. Uh, or we'll just uh, take off from where, where she left off. If you can just, uh, for our viewers, uh, just uh, put the context of this current, current uh, agitation yeah. with regard to the final acquisition. Uh, this particular uh, incident that uh, has happened two mm. days back. Mm. Yes. Uh, say we can, we'll take one uh, survey number, 18, 18 bar uh, 1. Mm. Mm. The land that is uh, deemed, you know, to be in that award, mm. it's, uh, it belongs to 17 or 18 parties, you know. Right. But that figure is that 5 crores, 35 lakhs is clubbed together and nobody knows because they are all adjacent. The houses are all so five adjacent. 5 plus 36 lakhs is exactly what? Is the amount of the award for that particular uh, survey number, 18 bar 1. Of one survey number? Of one survey okay, number. Okay, okay, okay. That's the award. Yeah. Okay. I'm referring to only that. Okay. So now these are all neighbors, next door neighbors, you mm. know. Nobody, but nobody has come there mm. and measured. Mm -hmm. See, when you, you, you make an award, the primary thing is that you should have a land survey done. Right. No such uh, physical survey was conducted. Mm -hmm. So people are, uh, they are not aware now whether which part of their land is to be acquired. Right, right, right. Just behind this plot is the land which is deemed to be in operational use of the railways. Mm. Right, it's about a buffer zone of about 10 uh, meters width. Right. Now this particular land, that it doesn't have a survey number. And this is all through from Murmugaon to uh, up to Kolein. That whole stretch of land on either side of the tracks doesn't have uh, the survey number. Correct. Now, in, in its haste to accord or hand over this uh, mm. land to the railways, the railways, uh, the government of Goa, see now, is look at this, how they are conniving with the central government. Mm. The government of Goa is uh, you know, they issued a notification to the Goa Gazette to uh, conduct a survey. Now, how do they conduct a survey? In the sitting there, quasi uh, offices, nobody has come down on the ground. Yeah, so that is that. That's one part which yeah. is important. But I think we should also kind of focus on the other fact that the basic land acquisition for which they had sought objections and which they very cruelly Correct. dismissed. 
now that the process of that acquisition is also also going on uh, this uh, the uh, all those I'm objections talking about the, yeah, the, yeah. those 26 objections yes. in this areas yes they all dismissed correct the grounds being that some of them uh, do not uh, you know these are environmental laws exactly correct yes so they yes. say the it is not under the purview of the railway act 1989 no the my point is yeah. they issue a notice on the 1st of august okay the notices arrive on the 26th of august right, right. and you are given 3 days correct. now the point here is that they were told to come and literally surrender the land exactly. which the people have outrightly refused. refused and these kind of refusals will happen in village after village, village, after village. Yes. so what happens after that because what happens is technically they can turn around and say that you are disobeying or you are dismissing a government order by correct, law correct the people are completely right because they are emotionally charged and they feel they are being completely wrong and they are going to refuse so what is the next step what's going to happen it's a, it's a direct clash now it is a direct clash yeah. the only option we have is to take the legal uh, recourse. recourse right there is no other option available but you all could have taken the legal recourse immediately why wait till the last moment no, to take the legal recourse we got a notice notice is just 3 uh, or 4 days Cor- before fair yeah. enough that, yeah. that's absolutely correct but yeah. the point here is that you all knew that this was coming no this this particular land is already under litigation it is already okay. admitted in the high court the entire there is a case all all the survey numbers or you talking about only, only of this particular areas ha huh, yeah. uh, no i'm i'm saying the entire all these 9 9 10 villages everything is under litigation no see most of the villages uh, hmm. unfortunately did not uh, approach the court right yeah right. so that was uh, something which we, uh, the villages uh, certain areas we, they were uh, not convinced you so you are essentially saying is that out of nine villages there will be many villages which which will ultimately op- openly surrender as well uh, we cannot say that okay. because now what is happening right. because of the opposition in hmm. uh, specifically in welsam pali sorshi right uh, arusi right. now the villages uh, villages in other areas also are you know coming uh, turning coming around up okay yeah. okay there is this case of mr shiko right uh, in uh, shandor right where he has gone approached the high court much much of usually after the after much of okay. yeah, yeah. okay so please I'll, uh, i'll come back to double tracking but i'd like to uh, introduce the other subject at hand with regard to regard to bhuma now the issue is some of us may know a little about bhuma some of us may, may not know anything about bhuma uh, people like you would know everything about it i just want to uh, firstly for uh, for many of our viewers who are only now getting into the bhuma issue if you can just outline a little bit as to what the issue really is to educate the people then we'll get into the larger discussion just slight correction before going into the yeah. actual aspect of yeah. uh, the bomma issue yeah. i am not an advocate by profession i am an engineer correct and con- the no i didn't say you are an advocate at all <laughs> no you said while introducing so ah. just a correction ah. i am not ah. an advocate i am an engineer hmm. and in this bomma issue this uh, there is a road hmm. national highway hmm. which is passing across the village hmm. there are multiple residential houses temples are just adjacent to the mil- right. village many right. people must right. have gone in that area hmm. must have experienced it in person hmm. Hmm. so this when uh, government is proposing for widening of that road all these areas this houses temples everything is will be getting affected right. now right. government very well knew about this hmm. so as a solution before going into the expansion it was presumably proposed by iitian mr parikar hmm. so he had anticipated this problem as and when this road widening would come hmm. that there would be a problem hmm. that temples would be affected there are many residential houses of the villagers which have been staying there for centuries now hmm. so their houses their residential houses temples their right. associated culture related to that temple everything will be affected so mm. anticipating that a bypass was proposed to this entire area wherein the bypass is not affecting any way right but right. the purpose of having a continuity in the road road network was getting resolved so right. it, it is there in the regional plan mm. which present government do want to adopt here to right 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 adopt, adopt and this highway bypass. starts from which point and ends at which point this as far point. as bomma is concerned it starts from meses hmm. and it goes to uh, kunde ministry okay. so that okay. that road right. that stretch right right so when a re- bypass is available in the plans the prevailing plan which is the regional plan 2021 mm. government mm. do want to adopt to that solution and government is neither willing to give a satisfactory answer as to why they want they do want to go into that bypass uh, provision which so is available on record so what according to you is the reason for this 
they have to come back and tell us, see, in this bypass which mm. is proposed, the mm. larger track, that is survey number 18 and 19, is already in government's domain. Right. The right. survey number clearly shows right. it is government of Goa which is holding this land. Right. So, 30 percent of the land which is there in the proposed road is already government's land. Right. Subsequently, going ahead, there are some real estate speculators who have procured that land, which is… You are talking of the <coughs> alternate, bypass. alternate bypass. Yes. Ah, real estate people have procured Revolved that land. Real estate okay. people have procured that land. Right. It, in Somewhere in 2021, mm. under Section 16B of TCP Act, mm. government has also proposed mm. to drop this bypass right. for the benefit of the real estate people. Right, right. Okay. So here the government is basically what they are trying to do. Huh. They are trying to ruin the locals mm. for their uh, chronic benefits. This 30% of government land is which land? The uh, the, the in current the bypass. Land. In the alternate bypass. Yes. Okay. 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 It, okay. They need not acquire it now. Right. No? Right. It right, is right. already government's land. Right. 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 So you are saying the alternate bypass is completely doable. Exactly. Right. And right. it was proposed by an IITian, Mr. Right. Parikar. He see by default being an engineer, he was in a better position to give a solution to a Correct. problem and this is a problem right. and government of the day is actually facing that problem because people are up in arms now. So tell me that from 2010 when this agitation happened during the Digambar Kamath government to 2023 which is almost say 13 years, what was happening in these 13 years? Let the villagers themselves answer that because okay. they had been to the court, they have got the orders in their favours right. in the past right. which, which actually resulted in this having this bypass on the plan. Right. Right, right. But okay. present government don't want to take that. Okay. Uh, Sanjay, please uh, please carry on and yeah. answer the same question as to what were you all doing from 2010 up to sir, 2000? Sir, I will be very comfortable with Konkan. Please, please, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Please, please. So, sir, 2010 is better. 2010 is better. 2011 is better. I am going to go to the next one. But I am going to go to the next one. What is the alignment? So, 2010 on Congress in general layout Carlo, then I'm a agitation Kelly. Any third time are yes, sir, car Jai's ruling Gurta, Jai Zamka Kabar Gurum Sutta, that third time are opposition on us. So Congress in layout Carlo, they agitation on Janami Barsale, Baba Kitari Poet Lamdeje, then Namka Monor Purikar and opposition leader as low, then a support Kelo, Teja Varo Matani Sultan as low, my give three pad Naik as low, to Rajan Naik as low, Kukurizo. तेजा बार विष्णु वाग असलो अनि जी फुल बीजेपी बॉडी ऐसा जी गोयन नाता है यहाँ सा ती हम जा फटला ना असली अनि है बैटल जिक पा खतिर तेरो ते टाइम आरा में एक कमिटी कर ले ली एनएच फॉर डायवर्शन कमिटी मुन्ना तेरो कन्वेनर असलो सुनील देसाई वो सुनील देसाई तो संजू देसाई ऐसा भाई ऐसो बीजेपी तो so, we are going to be headed by Manor Parikar. And as long as Goyan and NGO are going to be in that time, we are going to be in the alignment. So, we are going to be in the same way. So, we are going to be in Google. We are going to be in the ground reality. We are going to be in the ground reality. So, we are going to be in the same way. And as long as Goyan and NGO are going to be supported. And as long as we are going to be in 2010, we are going to be in 2011. ऑर्डर में ही तुम चीजें ऑब्जेक्शन असली ती अमी ग्रांटेड डरता अनि तो स्क्रैप करता तो ना आम का दिस लेके देख तेरे टाइम आओ लो जो एक्विजिशन ऑफिसर असलो भाई एंटरनेट डिस्ट्रो जा इन्हें हमको खूब हेल्प कर लगी देख तेका दिस ले ये जे चलता भाई तेरा रॉंग चलता तो आम का क्यों प्रत्येक स्पोर्ट एनएच जो ऑफिसर एले बोलो तेंका गाड़ी एंड क्यों ना मैं फुल स्ट्रेच बोले अनि ते बोले और प्राण आम का अच्छे दिशा नहीं लें वही वो जो आशा पे तो एलाइनमेंट बरोबर ना अनि जन्ना ते बॉम्बा एरिया एंड सांची सात जली हम का सकाई बार से ले ले सांची सात जली ते जन्ना तीक तोक जान ऑफिसर जो रुकड़े दोन दिशाने हमको ऑर्डर दिले अंतो स्क्रैप के लो अनि आज पूर्ण के लिए लायर सोड़ा नाम का अच्छे कौन नहीं ले जन्ना ए जिटेशन चालू आसले ते ना सुदिन सुदिन जो आसा सुदिन दोरी कर तो टेट टाइम आर हम चाहे गेंस हालताली आसले ते जो 
टेकल करता टाइम एक्चुअली पी डब्ल्यू डी मिनिस्टर आसो तो चर्चिल आलो आसो पुण सुदीन धवेकर हतुन खे तरी बॉम्बा हतुन हाथार लगता तो टेकल करता आसाना खूब त्रास पड़े जे बायपास दाखयता एक्चुअली बायपास आसा खबर नासले बेजिजा जगड़ा कि लॉजीक आसा जगड़ा भूमकार जो जगड़ा कि लॉजीक आसा तो लॉजीक आज तुम संग सोता लोक गोई संगूंक सोता हूँ आज जे टू थाउज टू वन मनोहर सरकार आसो बीजेपी सरकार वो तेजो ये आसो पर्रीकर टाइम दोन वर्स राज्य के हंगा टाइम तेने बायपास का बॉमान तो हमको खबर नासो जे टाइम एजुटेशन स्टार्ट जो टू थाउज टेन के टाइम जे पर्रीकर आगे गए टाइम तेने पी डब्ल्यू डी जन बुक मगोन घो तो सर्वे दाखिल सरप्राइज जो बाबा बॉमान बायपास आते बायपास एक गल लगन डिस्टर्बंस ना को डिवाइड जाना जे नॉर्म्स वाजपेय घूज टू वन ते नॉम्सा प्रमाण एकदम क्लियर कट वाले सारे तेजेर खे तरी न्याय मेटो हजे आस जी टू थाउज टेन इलेवेन जे स्क्रेप तो मेलो खे तरी टाइम जे टाइम तो स्क्रेप जो रोको पर्रीकर ऑर्डर दी आंकी एक कमिटी का धा जान नाव आ टेन मेम्बर कमिटी आसली ती हेडेड बाय दिगंबर कामत तथु रितु प्रसाद आसली संजीव सुनील देसा आसो पर्रीकर आसो हाउस कमिटी हाउस कमिटी हाउस कमिटी रिपोर्ट दिल्ली संगल उत्तम पार्सेकर रेगो या चीफ आसो पी डब्ल्यू डी रेगो ऑर्डर दी सिक्सटी क्रोर्स तेने एक्स्ट्रा घर रोडक आयपास रोड प्लान के एसेंब्ली नोरन तो दाखिल कसो ये तो प्रमाण स्क्रेप जो सुशेगा आज खे तरी सोन कौन चुकले जे पर्रीकर वर गए सेंट्रल लक्ष्मीक पार्सेकर हंगा चीफ मिनिस्टर आसो खे तरी वास लगे टाइम सर मजी आ लक्ष्मीक पार्सेकर पांच पांच धा मिनट एक भाषाबाजी जा एक इनोग्रेसन टाइम ते टाइम हाँ तुक तंका विचार जो जो अलाइनमेंट झगड़ो तुम्हार हाथीन दिल आज जो अलाइनमेंट कांग्रेस करते तो अलाइनमेंट का दिला जे जे ये एक सेक्रिफाइस के आठ नौ महीने त्रास का दिलांका आज मारपा उठले क्या मुझे टाइम तेने कि संगले मैं तुम्हें कहीं भिव ना हजे सॉल्यूशन का विश्वास घता जसो सुटेबल आसा तसो तो का ते उतर सुशेक रे टाइम पैसे परते गए जो आता पे फाटले सुदीन धवेकर प्रॉब्लम जो संगता पैसे परते गए ती गोष आता सडनली पे जैसे कहीं इंटिमेशन ना हम कहीं डिस्कशन ना पंचायती कहीं ना को कहीं ना सडनली एक्विशन नोटीस का आज जे पंद्रह वीस जान भोमचे जे पैली कह फाइल के लिए थे ऑब्जेक्शन फाइल के खुंचे बेजीस धरन आसा जे एंटनी सेम सेम जे पे मानले एंटनी कानले शेटकार मानले कहीं आयकोन घेना कंप्लीट भाई मार्ग दिल डायरेक्ट गेजेटार घर गेजेटार घता अर्धो जो वाड़ो आता पे आता नागजरकार पे कसा सिक्स बार वन एंड सिक्स बार टू घता कंक फुटले सिक्स बार वन एंड सिक्स बार टू मुझे घर टाइम तंका बाड़ कौक ना क्या एक बाड़कार एलिगेशन ये आसा वो प्रश्न जो आसा तो नेशनल हाईवे ना हि बाड़कार शाही आसा बीजेपी की क्या ये हतुन तेनी जे मुणकार आसा पे तंका काबार कर खीर हे षड्यंत्र जला जी फोर्टी फाइव थाउजंड जी जगह पे वहता है ती खे तरी भाई भाई पाली आसा जी हम कुकार आसा सैडीक जे लोग रहता जे माड़ो आसा त्यो सग नष्ट जता जी झाड़ा आसा आंबे आसा नाली झाड़ा आसा ती सी नष्ट जता हि खे तरी बाड़कार कोण करता हि हि सी मुणकार आज पता पुर्तुगेज टाइम आसा ती खे तरी का बाड़कार हाथी दिवस ये बीजेपी सरकार के षड्यंत्र आता सपोज शी टॉक्स ऑफ द भाटकार शाही ऑफ ऑफ द ऑफ द बीजेपी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ कोर्स एंड दीज सेंटिमेंट्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू टेक नोट ऑफ नो दिस 45000 स्क्वायर मीटर्स इज द टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ लैंड व्हिच विल अल्टीमेटली गेट एक्वायर्ड करेक्ट यस एंड व्हिच ऑफ द बोमा सर ऑफ द ऑफ द बोमा ऑफ द एंटायर विलेज एंड नॉट एंटायर विलेज देयर इज वन मोर स्ट्रेच करेक्ट सो दिस इज ओनली ओनली द बोमा एरिया करेक्ट बोमा नो ओनली बोमा इन बोमा इन टू पार्ट दे आर डिवाइडेड इनटू टू पार्ट्स 60% ऑफ बोमा एरियास रोड स्ट्रेच इज 45000 स्क्वायर मीटर्स व्हाट दे वांट टू एक्वायर द 60% ओके आई थिंक मोर 30 विल बी इंक्लूडेड Okay, so you're saying 60% of the Boma stretch yes. is about 45,000, and the rest 40%. 
rest yesterday what mr nilesh kabral was saying that mm. it was acquired in 1992 that mm. is what his claim is mm -hmm. that needs to be checked in fact from our side okay and this temple acquisition is about 1030 square meters is of the temple yes yes temple is the main devastan area and that will also go yeah that they are proposing to acquire now yesterday's justification was mr mm. nilesh kabral was giving he is mm. saying that he is not going to touch any part of the temple that's what he said yeah, he yeah. also so said that only four houses will go now on where is this figure of four houses coming no because he must be saying with some logic the, his logic oh. is that the houses which are there on survey plan which legal, was done legal. in the 1970s right yeah. okay. those houses he is considering as legal now and the other houses other, other houses are illegal. built on gutters no that is what he said in the assembly right. other houses are built on gutters and in the very same assembly when mr viresh borkar cited about those illegal bustis he started jumping so that means he is more interested in protecting those illegal migrants as and our govern houses is stating and giving a term like those are constructed on gutters this is what our existing mlas and ministers are doing this is the way how they are treating locals that now. means the other uh, the other homes will not get any benefits and they will not be treated as legal at all no, no. that is what he is stating yesterday hmm. hmm. those are illegally constructed that is what he is saying now ah so the impact of those words is very important what what you all are saying is very critical you are saying that the four houses the minister is talking about are the four houses that are legal in the eyes of the government. minister or the government yes and but there are other houses where a lot of local goans are living i mean goans are living but those houses have been termed as illegal constructed on gutters right 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 okay okay how will i'll uh, quickly switch yeah. back back to <laughs> but though the both the issues are completely linked but the point is the the insensitivity is uh prevalent in both Correct. both boma and the other issues <coughs> before i uh, ask a specific question again with regard to the double tracking uh if you could tell us that how i mean are, are the villagers or other people in the forefront of both these agitations do you all see any common ground where you all can come together and help each other out uh, definitely hmm. just now as uh, sapnesh has said sapnesh has said you yeah. know that uh, hmm. there were only four houses which were in those if, uh, which are affected right the similar uh, scenario also exists exist in the uh, model for example hmm. now there are residents who have not received any notices why right right they have not received notices because their houses were post uh, 71 right 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 okay Understand? okay so now those people are excluded from uh, from the this notice the whole process the whole process right 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 so okay. the other day when we went around right. my, my colleagues went around we asked them why are not attending say we are not receiving notices hmm. now only those houses which are registered you know in the survey only those have been uh, they have received so, so how many such people would be there how many uh, such survey numbers we maybe around uh, about 9 or 10 houses uh, so each house maybe you have about 8 10 family people. members okay yeah. okay so you are talking about about uh, close to 100 So, so 100 people are going to get in affected. that area. Yeah. Okay, okay, and and there has been no conversation with them, no discussion. No, nothing. they have earlier filed their objections. Right. When the first acquisition process has started, but right. this last uh, notification, they have been excluded. Okay. Now that means the authorities are uh, you know trying to ignore their claims. Okay. There's another you issue know? that you would briefly yeah. alluded to. See, apart from this acquisition that is taking place with regard to the the original oh, yeah. uh, notice and the awards that are going on, you very rightly mentioned, and we were discussing this also. See, what has happened is there's a very crucial aspect that viewers need to know. This this called the buffer zone. Exactly. I would call it the buffer zone politics, as it were. Exactly. Okay. Now, this whole buffer zone that exists between the railway tracks and the home and the houses. Yeah. Now, this buffer zone technically is something that the railways is claiming according to the particular act. Exactly. uh because the act says that if that the operating area of the railways is going to be uh even if there is a land which is not part part of the railways i don't think that uh, that particular term exists in the railway act right they say it is the operational use of the they have coined this new term so you are actually saying that this operational use of, of the, the railways, railways is a, beyond a, beyond any act, act yeah. it is a, it is a it is like a like a claim that has been acquired yes, exactly right, including with the land and okay. what they say exactly because oh. see if you see the topography of that area mm -hmm. the the railway is at a elevated uh, level right the village is the village that hamlet is mm. at a lower level i think about 2 meters lower level correct now when they they are claiming that part of that land adjacent to the existing railway track to be on the on the to be theirs to be theirs okay how can it be because the villagers are, have been uh, they have their uh, 
plantain, uh, you know, banana plantation, they have the coconut palms, they have their uh, fruit, other fruit bearing trees like mango and all, right. which they have been, uh, you know, they have been uh, even going at, uh, for commercialization, you know, right, right. selling it, you know, the, the yield to the market, whatever the excess. Correct. So, the land actually, if you, if at all, it, it should have been to the, to the, the residents out there. Right. The right, Munkars, right. I will put them as Munkars. But tell me how much uh, of this buffer land is in question now? See, all along the tracks. All, along the, tracks. all along the tracks. Hmm. On an average, it, somewhere it is 12 meters, somewhere it is 8 meters. So on an average, it is about 10 meters. Now, this particular You're land. Only, only in the Murbugao and no, Salsa no, no, it is all throughout, throughout. All throughout. throughout okay, okay. On either side of the tracks. Right, right. Now, this, uh, during the summer, it was used as a right of way. Hmm. And uh, during the rains, most of this area, if you see, it is it is like a trench, you know, white so trench, and used as a storm water drain for the village. So what you're essentially saying is that this double tracking is actually becoming a triple tracking or a quadruple tracking. Yes. In effect, exactly. because what's happening is that they are moving into areas which are beyond the exactly. double tracking areas, exactly. and they are entering into areas that would either be right of way, correct, or uh, used as spaces for for the acqu uh, accumulation see, of water. Basically, this were these areas. To our, uh, it belongs to the villages or to the local panchayat right. after it was right. panchayats were created. Right. Because this land was in their uh, wisdom, our ancestors kept this land right. as a buffer zone. Right, right. Also as uh, vibration dampers. Because right. you see the land, if you see it is, you know, there is a trench. Or, right. So these were also acting as a vibration dampers because all along the route, the route it actually the railway uh, tracks were laid on a mm on a carriageway, right. where horse cart, carriage, bullock cart, you know, the palki mudai amchi. So, all this thing, it was a route to go to the uh, seaport. And that has all been encroached. So, so, this has been, this has been encroached. The current uh, works mm. which are going on uh, right mm. now mm. are all illegal because they do not have, uh, government themselves have said that there is no survey number for this. So, how is that the RVNL is, yes. is constructing in, yeah. in, in, in those land? Correct. But they do not have a position. Advocate, you know, you had mentioned very, uh, very rightly uh, that there is a uh, there is a law which states that if there is, there are multiple crops grown in any particular area, then then the, the, that particular land has to be kept out of the land acquisition process. Could you just elaborate a little bit on? That? Yes. So yes. before uh, I coming to the part where crops are concerned, I would like to highlight what land acquisition actually means under Land Acquisition Act 2013. Right. So, land acquisition is basically when the government uh, is acquiring a particular land, a private land or a public land, for the sole reason of public benefit, right. for public work. Right. However, in this case of uh, double tracking, there is no public work that is concerned. It is solely used for a private affair, for a private cause. And the act specifically says, the welfare of public is paramount, without which land acquisition cannot come into picture because land acquisition is particularly done by the government for the public as a whole of a public benefit. Hmm. However, under the same act, uh, it particularly states that it forbids land acquisition where the land is a multi-crop irrigated area. Okay, However, that's a very important yes. point. Yes. Huh. And it forbids, hmm. the proper word under the act says it forbids. And there is evidence to, sh to show that multi-crops have been grown in the Yes, okay. in places uh, like hmm. Welsau and Sauli, hmm. there are multi-crops grown. Right. And not on a private basis, on a whole, on a larger scale. There are coconuts, as Orville rightly pointed out, there are multiple uh, crops that are grown, which the RBNL has not taken into consideration. And their sole purpose is only to get the land and uh, when we say acquire land, there is no certain um, measurement when when they were asked as to how much area is RVNL acquiring, there is no answer. In specific. It looks like uh, from the notices given, if today they are saying this uh, particular um, area, I am sure in the future they are going to acquire land beyond measures. Okay. Now, but has this very important point uh, been included in any petition or any argument in court so far? Yes, it has been included in the High Court. With regard to which, which, which writ petition? The original writ petition or there is a fresh one that has been? There is a new petition that is coming up also. Huh. Yeah, we are, uh, we are giving a return to that actually.
Okay. So what has happened uh, is the local panchayat. No, but you are giving it as an interlocutory application, IA or is part of, no, see, or is a separate WP uh, uh, or a PIL? This was a PIL ah, in the okay. Supreme Court. Right, actually, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So we are withdrawing that petition. Uh, this was uh, uh, panchayat, the local panchayat. That was only panchayat, the Valsam Pari Sursi Panchayat. Right. Which had, uh, which was a petitioner in that mm. particular mm. case. Mm. So uh, the, the Supreme Court in its wisdom, Mm. has uh, told us to approach the lower courts that mm. and we are approaching the high court in mm. this matter. Mm. Okay. This particular matter was regarding the right of way of the villages. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what you and in, in that is the what we are calling that buffer zone. Okay. So so what you are essentially saying is that you are going to do a uh, a separate move a separate petition yeah, exactly. only on the buffer zone case. Exactly. Mm, exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Now with regard to uh, another important point here which you all briefly mentioned is that when you are kind of acquiring or entering into the bu into the buffer zone okay the buffer zone anyway does not belong to the railways exactly okay they are they are uh, getting into your they right are, of way uh, yeah, yeah. now so where does this survey number controversy c come about when in any case they are claiming that they have a right to enter into areas which they do not own because it is part of the part of the entire process or Correct. part of their so if that is the case then the whole argument that this particular uh, survey number does not belong to them doesn't really count because in any way they have assumed that they can enter into areas even when they don't don't own it exactly. as part of this. So I'm just trying to get a little clarity on this. Yes, yeah. but however, at the same time, ah. uh, with reference to the act, yeah. this is the entire process right. that RVNL has to follow or any government authority has to follow. Right. But at the same time, they have not done. There's a social impact assessment that needs hmm. to be done. Hmm. A report of the entire area concerned needs to be given as to what social impact right. will the project co uh, cause in right. future. Right. That's not done. Right. And uh, that should be done with respect to the local government as well, hmm. which RVNL is not considered. Right. Then a public notification has to be put up. Public notification for which? See, for this particular land already public notification yes, has been put up yes. which they have dismissed. But what you are I'm speaking of which public notification? Correct. But what I am trying to say is there's a, there's a step procedure. What okay. about the social impact assessment? Okay. But is it mandatory? Yes, it is mandatory under the law. Because okay. Social impact shows that what impact the environment or around areas around are going to have. Hmm. For example, this double track is basically... Uh, oh, but this should have been challenged. You, you all could have got, got an order on this. The, this is already one oh. of the objection hmm. put before the... Um, Right. department and we are going to take steps okay uh, one thing also uh, i just uh, want to add on uh, uh, there was a very very uh, controversial uh, uh, amendment that was done right i think it will also apply to the uh, boma, boma as well issue. Yeah. Uh, there was this uh, goa legislative diploma amendment bill 2023 okay okay huh. and it has received the assent of the governor on 16th of june this year okay <coughs> This pertains to the Kumudad lands. Okay. Now, in our area, there are a lot of Kumudad land. Right. You know. Right. Uh, what it states is that the bill gives the government powers to suspend the Kumudad. Now, so there could be some Kumudad they might object to right. the land being given. Hmm. So it states the bill gives the government powers to suspend the Kumudad, uh, you know, body hmm. Hmm. and appoint government officials to check to take charge of the Kumudad. Yes. Yes. I'm now you see, you see how they are brazen they are in this. Hmm. Hmm. You see, hmm. because in our area, for example, in Majorda, they have objected. The Kumunda, the attorney, the president, they have objected. Uh, and uh, the RVNL officials, they went to the tenants hmm. and they got cozy with the tenants, let me put it that way. Hmm. And they took over the land, took, hmm. uh, you know, and illegally they started construction at Majorda. Now, despite this the, is the RVNL construction, Ar yeah, despite okay. uh, uh, the Kumunda objecting, hmm. now when uh, they are going to challenge, they will uh, put this act. Oh, this is Komlindad land on yeah, which construction yeah, exactly. is started. Oh. So, so, you see how they are, uh, this, how brazen they are. So, please, do you feel that this, this, can, this can apply also to the Bhuma case? Yeah, part, some minor part of land also belongs to Komlindad. Right. In right. Bhuma. Right. So, we need to check with what Bhuma Komlindad has to say on that. But mm. uh, as far as I understand, mm. all the villagers of Bhuma are together and they are against the government decision of going ahead with this land acquisition. So tell me how many uh, villages or how many homes or how many families are getting affected and how many families may not be affected but in, in spirit they are with this whole, whole point. Entire village with the people who are affected, the people who are not affected, they are with the uh, people who are agitating 
largely because hmm. see there are certain customs religious customs which happen surrounding hmm. those temples which are there right. and which are directly in the land acquisition zone how there many temples would be there sanjay uh, around uh, four four okay four. Yeah. Right. Right. so there is a tradition wherein a palki is brought from one temple to another temple from across this stretch of the road right now if this road become four lane or six lane how are they going to conduct this tradition so see when we are talking about temple will not be touched it has to be in totality absolutely correct, correct. now here hmm. and uh, this social impact assessment should had been done hmm. that is as per to, uh, 2013 land acquisition act right but to bypass this provision they are acquiring this land as per national highway authority right 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 absolutely correct now as per national highway authority if they need not consult any of the people locals there for going ahead with the plans of land acquisition if the land acquisition was done according to 2013's provision act then they would the primary uh, requirement was they were supposed to get in touch with the villagers Correct. understand the social scenario of that village and then only proceed with land Has acquisition a public hearing happened no as a eia happened that is EIA what the problem eia is there yeah okay that is what the problem is they are not getting in touch with the villagers they are not convincing them they are not putting out the exact plan only after huge hue and cry people coming on roads pwd minister is uh, yesterday putting out a presentation to media right right, right. that presentation he is not even sharing over social media or, or in the official uh, uh, website so so basically what you are saying is that the presentation made by the pwd minister explaining why this alignment is needed has not been explained to the people who are getting no. affected ultimately no not right. at all he is put who is doing this through media now so you are uh, secondly you are saying a public hearing has not been held on this sanjay is saying is eia eia has been happened and sanjay, just tell us about the eia report eia report eia report janna ami vaatlo tena ata to sangta steel cha char mun amka yes by pass on sales correct correct steel mantha pun ai report sangta to jer ubo jata feeling karun mati jer jena jena the contradiction here only uh, fo- right. 45 lakh cubic meter ji bellari sun boman ash etli poy ti steel sak lagon etli e photaita amka sarke maka clear karpa jay char char ji ghara mantha to fakt ti divide karpa tejer maka clear karpa jay tumcha madhyamatlan kitya ki hi char ghara khunche mantha do don ghara amonkar achi ji asa ti modleli ghara ti dun kon rawana ti legal asa majhe ek ghar asa te ami badkara kade vikte getlela te legal asa ani ek phude nagzari wado asa boy tene tashe vikte getlela hi char ghara wo lokan kaso full karta jana ata te stretchak da ghara ek line is asa तेजा फुड़े आनी पांच सौ घर आसा आता तो संगता कसो जी लीगल आसा घर ती चार घर वा तो बाकी कहीं लगना आता तो मुटा कि लैंड जी हम अर्दीशी देवला वोना क्लियर करप देव जी आसा पे लगे देवला फाटन आसा तक टच जाएना जी रैंड आसा पे जेना पायलिंग करते प्रॉब्लम कि पायलिंग जेना करते पेजो इतना इम्पेक्ट जो ती रैण जी आसा देवी आदे पे आसा देव खबर आसा थे कश भिरंग ये ये दिशा मेजपा गलो तो बोंग लगो सकता राखना ये आसा न देव देवक राखना तो राखों शकना आसा ते खाती एक मुठी सगले लोग घर खीर भाई सरोंक ना ये माँ निलेष काब्रा संगपा जाए ये गवर्मेंटा संगपा जाए जे जगड़ा तो घर खीर नुचे अस्तित्व देव ट्रेडिशन देव कालो सगले जे उत्सव आसा रस्त्यार जोपी जी अस्मिकाय आसा जी सोबीतकाय आसा जी सभी बाटा बेसा आसा ती सी थे नटले आसा ती सोबीतकाय जी शंबर टक्के गांव आसा तथुली अंशी टक्के जो गांव आसा ऑलरेडी फटयले गए पैले जे युनिवर्सिटी ती जा तथा इंडस्ट्रीयल एरिया हाड़ी हाँ ती तुम्हें फाटले फाटी जे दीपक धवलीकर एम एल एसो ती इंडस्ट्रीय जोन मु आता हे लोग शिफ्ट बसू करते इंडस्ट्रीय जोन शिफ्ट करते जागा जी दाखयता पे तीन शे मीटर बीते ती इंडस्ट्रीय जोन मु कन्वर्ट जी आसा आज जे तू नाइंटी वन एक्वायर के माका क्लियर करपा नाइंटी वन काल तुम्हें पैलो तो सैवेंटी वन 
मजे मे ये विषय गवर्नमेंट कन्फ्यूज आसा हमें कितले फाटी तंक चैलेंज के लिए मजे समोर है ग्राउंडार झगड़ो है आई एम रेडी विथ देम हाँ तंका ग्राउंडार झगड़प रेडी आसा को फुडन बसप रेडी आसा तीन ये खरी डिबेटी घोप क्या घना कन्फ्यूज आसा तंका कहीं खबर ना हत जे निवड़न ये बारान आया दान आनी अक जे एजुटेशन जो नाइंटी वन जे तो संगता एक्वायर के टू थाउजंड टू वन जो परिकर सरकार सीएम आसो टाइम ते बायपास क्या का हजा उत्तर जाए आज घता एआई रिपोर्टी एक संगता तुम्हें जे कर्म आसा ती वे आसा आज तुम्हे कमी क्या चार घर वा जे एक्विशन आज करता पे नो जे लोक बड़े खबर बसना एक्विशन गेजेट गेजेट मेरे मालकी जो हक्क आसा लोक तो एन एच आई कहीं वो तो आज तुम हेजो रोड का तो उतो फाला आज फोटोपा खीर तू धाटो रोड का फाला हम भूगी वोली जी को झगड़ो क्या हि जी जाग आसा ऑलरेडी तंका विकले आसती जे सरकार जो आसता तो पांच वर्षा खीर आसता आंसर दिवस फाला ये जे एन एच आई वन रोड करूं ये टाइम को उत्तर दिवच उत्तर इन दास्ट नाउ निलेष काब्रल इज क्लेमिंग डेट लैंड एक्विशन एड है सिमिलर मेथडोलॉजी मस्ट हैव बीन एडॉप्टेड एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट विदाउट इन्फॉर्मिंग द पीपल विदाउट एक्सप्लेनिंग देम व्हाट इज एट द स्टेक दे मस्ट हैव एक्वायर्ड दैन इन 1992 एंड नाउ दे आर क्लेमिंग दैट इट इज गवर्नमेंट्स लैंड वी हैव एक्वायर्ड दैट लैंड इन 1992 संजय इज सेइंग दैट द गवर्नमेंट अपीयर्स टू बी कंप्लीटली कंफ्यूज इन दिस कंफ्यूजन डू यू रियली फील दैट दिस इज कंफ्यूजन or it is a garb of confusion to hide a deeper reality yeah i feel so i feel so what is the deeper reality that government see we are also not able to clearly understand what mm. government is up to see they are mm. talking about development mm. Mm. but whose development we are the people no the development should be surrounding us correct and for us correct the correct. development correct. should be for us correct. but in this circumstances what is happening even in south even in north now even in our village where in mining is the concern yes it looks like they are more interested in their crony friends they are more interested in the businesses of their friends as compared to locals we goans and the, in this case also i am 100% sure he is not giving the proper justification as to why he is not going for that bypass road He is only giving a reason that it is not having the requisite alignment. Right, right. So, please, before we wrap up, because we got about five minutes left, if you can just uh, tell us about the way forward, what villagers are planning to do, what what are we going to see in the next couple of months? Because obviously, you all are no mood to back down and give give up. No, 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 so, no, what thanks. what is what is going to happen? What do we see from now? We are going to explore all the possible remedies, be it legal, be it social, be it political. Hmm. And good for us that uh, Lok Sabha election is just round the corner. We had approached uh, uh, existing MP also, hmm. Mr. Shripad Nai. Hmm. He has ensured that uh, I will be with the people. Right now, how exactly he will be with the people? That we are also not understanding, hmm. because in these circumstances, I uh, I like to put forth a very interesting story from Mahabharata. after the battle of mahabharata when the all the five pandavas and draupadi they went on a pilgrimage they accompanied one dog and later on at the end of the story it was revealed that that dog was yama so i hope mr shripad naik is not in that manner with us <laughs> okay a very strong words but i think these are sentiments talking what will uh, coming back to uh, Uh, your uh, the, the current uh, yeah. agitation happening in in Morbogao and Salset with regard to double tracking. What are the immediate steps ahead? One is of course the whole the threat of the final step of the acquisition process. Correct. Secondly, saving the buffer zones. Exactly. These are two two exactly. aspects. And thirdly, of course, if you could also highlight a very uh, interesting story that you said that the certain villagers were so part of this movement and those who agi agitated Correct. that they even refusing awards what crores. Exactly. to join the movement exactly. and and just su sum yeah. it up a little bit for us yes. see we have a particular uh, gentleman uh, yeah. and uh, see there are always the issues that mm. you know landlords are uh, uh, you know only at their uh, they want only benefit for them selfish selfish yes. very good that that's the correct <laughs> word i couldn't get <laughs> okay but mm. here we have a, a particular case you know mm. and uh, the total uh, amount earmarked for this particular land acquisition is about 100 crores mm. 
And uh, out of this, the, the, the biggest beneficiary was one landlord from Isursi. And he has been part of uh, our, our uh, Can you movement. take the gentleman's name since he's a hero? Yes, <laughs> he's uh, uh, Mr. Bruno Pereira. Right. Yeah, from Isursi. And he was the biggest uh, beneficiary, the amount being in excess of 6 crores 35 lakhs. And he refused it? And he refused, he not only refused it, hmm. but he also is now pushing and prodding me, when do we go to court, you know. So he's refusing that particular award yeah. against against his acquisition. The acquisition. Yes. yes. And, uh, you know, he's pushing and prodding us, hmm. you know, to to take the legal means, hmm. to be part of the, you know, that he will bear the expenses. Hmm. Hmm. Now, herein, I want to say that people like Bruno, you know, they, they bring us the, you know. Hope. Hope, you know, for the rest yes. of Goa, actually, yes, yes, you know. Yes, yes. Mm. And seeing that, uh, I think most of the landowners mm. who do not reside in these areas, mm. I think they will also follow his example and stand with the rest of the villages who are afflicted. Because most of the tracks, you know, in certain sections, it is only the mudkars who are affected. Right. Okay. But having said that, there are a lot of uh, impediments in our, uh, in our effort. I can recall that when we used to go to the deputy collector in Marmonga, he used to always taunt us, Tujhe yaar cadastral plan art re, cadastral plan art re. So it never struck me until… What that meant? What it meant actually. You know, he used to taunt us and give a very wicked smile like, you know. Now we understand because we went, our team met and we decided that we did our running around, went to the DSLR and all this here. And we found out verbally that uh, that they said it's not there cadastral plan is non-existent is non-existent no hmm. it was there hmm. because based on that they have done the survey plan okay. so what's the issue no the issue is that hmm. uh, we have got through rti hmm. uh, uh, a response from the revenue department that cadastral plan for the three villages Velsam, pali isorsi have gone missing they have disappeared. Yes. They have just, they have made they have to been. disappear. Which the deputy collector obviously knew. Exactly. Mm, right. So, this was there. Based on these records, mm. the survey plan was done. Now, what has the government done? Have they right. taken any action? Has any uh, criminal complaint filed? Because these are not small, uh, prop, you know, these are of the entire villages. Now, tomorrow, if we want to justify something from this previous record, where do we go? So you see the the how the local government has connived with the central government. Yeah, well, yeah, I will also point this, out yes. one more uh, thing yes. is uh, recently there was a notification in the press uh, that uh, local passenger trains have been discontinued because of the electrification works you know in our areas. Hmm. They have stopped the uh, passenger trains, local passenger trains from running from Vasco de Gama to Kule. But does uh, coal, coal wagons, are, coal continuing wagons are continuing on a daily basis? So does it uh, that uh, that electrification doesn't affect the the coal trains? Also, for that example, that uh, we have a uh, the biggest uh, uh, agro this you know fertilizer plant. Sometimes at days on end, four or five days, we see their uh, uh, wagons uh, stranded. I will say at a uh, consolidated railway station, hmm. Why, whereas the coal rakes are passing. Passing by, correct. So, for whom is this development? Is it for the people or is it for only Mr. Jindal and other Mr. Adani who have their uh, plants in Bellary, far away Bellary? Right, right, right. right. Arvika Baito, if you could just sum up uh, a little bit on the uh, legal challenges ahead and the legal uh, path that you're planning to undertake. What are the immediate areas where your legal intervention is immediately required and, and is being planned? Um, as mentioned, there's already a case filed before the High Court. Hmm. Uh, we have filed a written objection before the Deputy Collector and we're waiting there for their reply. Right. However, after we get a reply from the Deputy Collector, we'll be taking measures, going to the appellate authorities hmm. and uh, filing. We say no to double tracking. We're not in their favor as there are already tracks wherein which is underused right. and which can be used to transport coals. Hmm. Coal has no use in Goa at all. We are the state Goa is only used as a victim here. We are not beneficiaries at all in the double tracking matter. Mm. However, there are other means to transport coal. Sure. Mm. Uh, as Vishakhapatnam is one of uh, the Correct. one yes. way that can happen. That's right. Yes. However, mm. in this bargain, 
there are multiple houses in Velsa and neighboring villages which are ancestral houses, age old houses that are going to be washed away by the uh, by RV and mm. and it doesn't end only for these villages. In the near future, RV and is going to use the neighboring areas for uh, their plants of making uh, RV and waste disposal or using it for construction. And it's not only again, it's not only Welsa in the neighboring areas. However, that's going to go on to places like Majorda yes, or Benali, yes. Kolwa. Correct. And yes, and the same thing from the other side from Chandor, Kurtori, Maina, all of these places. So it's not only the battle of Welsa, Izorsi, Kansauli. It's also the bat it's the battle of the entire Goa, Goa as a whole, a state as a whole. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, we have unfortunately run out of time, but this discussion can go on and on. The sad takeaway from this, however, is that this whole march of development is crushing those who are supposed to be developed. And this is happening everywhere. It's a march which is uh, caused a death knell or a raised the death knell of a lot of people who have been living here for ages and ages, whether it is in Boma or whether it is in uh, Pale, Isorsi, Velsa, Majorda, Utorda and all along the entire track. The larger narrative cannot be missed. It is all about the forces of quote unquote development versus the forces who uh, are supposed to be developed. And the people who are supposed to be developed are becoming daily victims of this whole march of development. In Bhoma, the sad irony and the bitter truth is that there exists an alternate way, a way which can save houses, a way which can save places of worship, a way which can save your heritage, your past, your traditions, your customs and your daily uh, way of life and after all your the feelings that exist in each one's hearts. All this can be saved and protected if the basic common sense and the existing approach is followed. Let's simply use another bypass and the point is if you cannot use that bypass which is going to save all of this, please give an explanation as to why you cannot do it. The point here is that all that the villagers there are looking for are tangible answers. They are also looking at one more thing. They are asking a simple question that the very highway that you opposed in 2010 is being proposed by you in 2023. So between this opposition and proposition, what is the story? Sopresh hinted at the possible reason. Sanjay also did the same. The answer here is that these allegations cannot remain as allegations. They need to be replied to. With regard to the double tracking, again, it is the same saga that continues where not only have you acquired land, but you are entering into buffer zones, you are entering into, into, into areas where uh, multiple crops are growing, you are entering into areas and declaring it as a public purpose project when no public seems to be, no public purpose seems to be achieved. And this is what has led to the current state of affairs. The point here is that if there are so many people who are antagonized, so many homes that are getting getting destroyed, so many brave people who are coming out onto the streets and fighting, people rejecting awards, then there must be something wrong in the basic system that is being applied to. When there are so many people up and about, people who are not even directly involved but have decided to pledge their lives and their time and their work to do this, there has to be some truth and some weightage given to the people view. The idea here is that if there is a government view and there is a people view, there needs to be reconciliation, there needs to be meeting of minds. You cannot have this conflict going on and on because it benefits nobody. Anyway, we will continue to raise these issues as we always do and the, all one is asking uh, the powers that be is to participate in conversations and give tangible answers. I thank all the panelists for coming here and giving their views. It's been a very intense and a very fruitful discussion. Thank you very much.